Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our webinar today. I'm Jenny Bailey from the Agile Business Consortium. We're the not-for-profit member organization who are leading, promoting, and enabling business agility worldwide. Just to keep with a little bit of housekeeping, um, we are going to be recording this webinar, so the session's definitely been recorded, and the slides will be sent to you after the webinar. Also, you have an opportunity there to uh, ask questions, and we'll have a space at the end of the webinar um, where I'll put some questions to uh, my guests this morning. But um, if you want to put any questions in those boxes there on the platform, please do so. And uh, if we have time and it's a, obviously a relevant question to what we're talking about, then I will stop the flow, as it were, and, uh, and put the questions forward. So we love to keep discussions open here. So please feel free to uh, add some questions in there and we'll get to them in due course. Um, also, right, the topic today on the webinar is um, also about exploring agile marketing. Um, now, this is a fairly uh, new topic for some and not so for others. Um, I'm aware there's lots of books out there on the topic and the subject. Um, and it kind of makes sense to us as well here at the consortium, because obviously as the wave of uh, agile goes through organizations, it's going to settle into marketing because it, it seems a natural fit in lots of ways. So at the conference recently, we were talking about agile procurement. We were talking about agile HR. And and now we're going to be discussing agile marketing and actually looking into it um, and looking at the values. And also, we're looking at this really from um, two different angles this morning. Um, my guests this morning are really coming at it from two different tracks, really. We've got one that's very much the mindset and the ethos. And, um, and this lady has really studied um, agile marketing in a great deal of uh, level, really. You could say even it's her passion. Um, she, she's very passionate in marketing in general, but she's read the books. She, she's looked at it for a number of years now, and she's actually brought it to the consortium's um, um, interest, really, I think is the, probably the right word to say. And we're very uh, interested in the topic. Um, and like I said, it's a natural fit with Agile. So we're bringing this to you as an exploratory um, investigation, really, into looking into Agile marketing. And my other guest this morning is uh, is actually working in Agile marketing, implementing Agile techniques. And I think it will be really interesting to have this conversation with both of them, really, to discover um, one's obviously the mindset view and one is very much the, uh, the delivery and the implementation and how the Agile marketing techniques are actually working. So that's what we're going to be covering this morning. Um, also, if you've got any feedback at any time, please send that through to me at jenny at agilebusiness.org. Um, I'm always really happy to receive your comments um, and your feedback. So without further ado, let's go through and let's introduce you to our panel this morning, who we've actually got. So, as I said, this is a new subject for us for the consortium, and it's the first one we've actually done. Um, so... Um, what I'd like to do is introduce you to Pamela Ashby, who is our um, Agile Marketing and Communications Consultant at the Consortium, and also Sabina Stockdew, um, and she's Head of Marketing and uh, PR at Radtac Limited. So ladies, good morning. How are you both? Morning, Jenny. It's fantastic to have this opportunity to talk to you about Agile Marketing and um, share some views and together explore the value that Agile Marketing has. Thank you, Pam. No, it's fantastic for you to be here. Thank you for your time. And Sabina, you're there as well, aren't you? So welcome to the uh, welcome to the webinar, Sabina. Thank you, Jenny. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, everyone. Or good afternoon, depending where you are listening exactly. from. Yes, um, <laughs> there are a few afternoon and evenings and, uh, yeah, and earlier mornings as well. <laughs> That's All right. Wow. Well. <laughs> so, yes, absolutely. We have to take that into consideration. Well, thanks for the invite today. I'm very excited to be on the webinar. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have a re really good conversation exploring agile marketing. Um, so I'm look very much looking forward to what we're going to explore. <laughs> Fantastic. No, Sabina, it's great for you to join us. Thank you. So before we kind of really tackle the subject and look into the, the values and how we see it and everything like we've just been discussing, really, um, Pam, can you just give us a, a little outline of, uh, of your profile, really? OK, well, I think, you know, my profile in itself is only of interest in as much as it provides my perspective. It's who I am mm -hmm. and what I'm what has led me to see the value of agile marketing. So I came from a very large corporate background. Then I moved into the creative services sector, managing marketing within creative agencies. 
Um, and then I've done a lot of international marketing in IT that drew me into the project management world, at which point I stopped in my tracks and thought, hang on a moment. <laughs> I've been a project manager all my career. OK, so that was sort of one epiphany, if you like. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was from there that I, I came to Agile and, and Agile marketing. I've also been a journalist in my past and, and done a lot of um, journalism and feature writing around creative services, around marketing mm -hmm. and project management particularly, and now Agile. Fantastic. And now Agile with a capital A. It's, it's, it's a major part, not, isn't it? It's a huge or passion. Not, or not. Really, no, you know, I know we that. We get into that one, yes, Jenny. We're not getting into we that. That's a rabbit hole. Bit. That's a rabbit <laughs> hole. We're not going to get into that one at all. Um, and Sabina, can you, can you just give us a little bit of an outline on, on RadTech and your role there, please? Yes, of course. So I come from a marketing and PR education background, and I've worked in, uh, in marketing and PR before I joined RadTech. Um, it was with Rattag that I actually have discovered Agile. I hadn't really come across Agile before, um, not with you know lowercase a, not with uppercase a. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. And I, um, I sort of come from a from a technical ma um, marketing background, mm -hmm. and it's in my role at Rattag that I have discovered Agile, and you know it's been a really good learning journey, and still is, um, by all means. Where we're learning from from our our colleagues, our consultants, and our trainers every day. So um, RATAC is a, you know, it's, it's a global consulting group that catalyzes agile transformation mm -hmm. by empowering organizations to adopt, embed and evolve agile ways of working. And we do that as a company through coaching and consulting and through training. So, you know, because we want to be um, to be a good consulting and training company, we um, we want to work in an agile way. You know, we want to pre practice what we preach, essentially. Of so. Course. Within the company, we've started to apply agile, an agile mindset, and agile ways of working into all of our departments. You know, not just teaching others how to do it. We um, we try to do our own, and hopefully, we succeed in some ways. <laughs> well, that's great. I mean, that's great that you're you're sort of um, obviously teaching it, training it, and walking it at the same time. And uh, I know you've got some great techniques that you actually. Um, um, employ really at uh, your organization so we'll, we'll come to that a little bit later but um thank you that that's that's a really lovely outline um i think before we actually start what i'd like to do is actually run um a poll uh to find out actually who's um who's out there um really who's who's uh, joined us this morning and in terms of who's actually working in a marketing role currently so um if you can just put your fingers please on the on the keypads and join us with this poll that would be fantastic i'm just about to launch this one for you so what we're asking you is, um, are you currently working in a marketing role uh, at the moment? So if you can please um, answer that for us, that would really give us a really good understanding of uh, who's listening in. OK, so it looks like it's it's always, it's well, it's gone 50 50 now, funnily enough. First of all, it started off really strong, but it's gone to 50 50. So that's where it's settled. So that's wonderful. Thank you very much for that. So we've got about 50 percent in marketing. And uh, and 50 percent curious, I think, to join us to learn more about um, agile marketing. Clearly, um, okay. So we've got one more poll just to send out for you, um, and that is: um, Are you using agile techniques or an agile approach at the moment? So I'm going to launch this one for you. So again, if you can uh, respond, we'd really appreciate it, just to get an understanding of uh, who's listening there and who who's who's joined us this morning, this afternoon, this evening. OK, so this is coming through really quite strong in terms of it's about 70 percent um, using um, an agile approach at the moment and agile techniques. So thank you very much for that. That, that really helps us and, and steer the conversation um, uh, for the uh, for the webinar. So Pam, how do you view that? I think I think that's really interesting, isn't it? It, it is. Um, I think that it's interesting because 50 50 in marketing but a higher percent, much higher percentage mm. using agile techniques, mm. which is very heartening. Mm. I, you know, I'm loving that. <laughs> so, yeah, That's good. good. Sabina, what's, what's your take on that out of interest? 
I think it's really interesting. I mean, um, we've seen, you know, Agile become this this very large phenomenon worldwide, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. we've seen it growing um, as what started out from software and IT background has really expanded into other areas, including marketing. And I think in some ways, you know, we're getting to the point where, where Agile is not really just a... Um, you know, I could be doing that, that would be nice to do, but it's it's some sometimes even becoming like a necessity because you want to, you know, you want to you want to survive, you want to thrive, you don't want to be overtaken by your competition. So I think it's really good that, that as much as many people as possible explore, you know, agile ways of working. Okay. All right. No, well that's a great start. Thank you for that. Um let, let's let's move on then. Now we know who's listening. Um let's let's really look at this uh term agile marketing, shall we? Um Pam, would you start us with this here, please? Because I believe obviously you've been working in this for some time and it's a huge passion of yours and you've done a lot of study in this agile marketing realm, as it were. So these I believe are um your values, aren't they, of how you actually see um agile marketing and, and the benefits. So can you can you talk us through this one? I think in terms of, you know, this is a webinar to explore the meaning of agile marketing. So let's look at what sits behind agile marketing. Value in any element of agile is, is always a critical factor because anybody that's working in an agile way is constantly looking for value. You don't do something unless you can see the value for the business. We have to have an eye to productivity, which is critical to marketers. Because, frankly, they're always busy. They've always got more on their desks than they feel they can handle. Now, Agile gives us some techniques and some clues on how to, to cope with that. We'll talk about that later on. Putting the customer at the absolute center of everything that we do is a critical element of Agile. And it doesn't take too much imagination to see that that sits very well with marketing. Mm, yes, absolutely. Authenticity, I think, is is something that has massive reach. It covers the whole area of being true to yourself, knowing enough that you can be honest because you have genuine knowledge that, and understanding that sits behind that and working in a really transparent way. And again, these are all things we're going to talk about later Mm -hmm. to really pull out why that matters. Mm H to H. H to H. H to H. (laughs) Now, this is just a a little quirk of mine. Um, In marketing, we talk about B2B, business to business, B2C, business to consumer. In today's world and tomorrow's world for the new world that we're lining ourselves up for, forget all that. It's H to H. It's human to human. What we're doing now is building relationships and communicating at a very human level. That's good. I'm glad about that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, but people forget, you know, we're, we, we're, not, we're not machines. No, we are and, certainly and the not. The business world used to be actually quite mechanistic. Mm-hmm. And that's for yesterday it is no longer good I'm, I'm very glad on that one okay and trust and transparency that's that's a huge agile value anyway isn't it you have to have trust you have to have trust and transparency and perhaps particularly trust mm. um to to feel safe it's that psychological safety mm-hmm. that's really really important for being able to experiment and learn if you're not at that point where you can say well maybe that didn't work mm. then you can't really work in an agile way. Okay. But again, more on that later. Okay. And then when we were talking about these these values, um, um, Sabina, you wanted to add visualization into there, didn't you? Yes, that's correct, um, Jenny. So for us, in my personal view and in what we do at Rattag, visualization is a really big part and is really key to everything we do because, you know, it, it just improves what you do and it adds value in so many areas and in so many ways. Um, it's and visualization should really be a large part of agile anyway because what's the point of you know working in a silo and and for no one to be able to see what you're doing mm. you need to be able to to show the rest of the company and then um what well, you know internally to your company and externally to customers mm. what you're doing so it kind of goes kind of inwards towards the company and out, outwards towards your customers and it, it supports so many of the other values that you have mentioned, Pam. 
for us, you know, we find that it really helps with engaging stakeholders. Um, it encourages collaboration. When people see what you're doing, they can jump in. You know, they can add to it. You can you can collaborate on things where people can add value. Um, it's growing trust and it's reassuring the business and the customers because they they know they can see what you are doing. It's showing what the value is that you bring, and it increases productivity. And you know, in some ways, it really helps with refocusing and staying on track. When you visualize what you're doing, it's, mm. it's kind of easier to say, you know, what am I doing? How is it looking? Is it, am I doing the right things? Am I doing what I'm supposed to? Mm -hmm. So it, it's really that supporting, you know, all the other values. And we've seen it a lot of times in, in what we do. And in-house, we've got, you know, we've got a service which um, which is around visualization. and We've seen it with clients that you know we have a, a visualization artist who goes in and for example he captures um, insights from meetings he makes them visual and instantly just helps people understand what you know what we're talking about <laughs> mm. no no that's right and, and we can i mean you, you obviously use a lot of visualization in your implementation of agile marketing as well which um we can come to later i mean that there is lots to talk about on that level but a visualization is, is obviously a very key factor there for you which which um which makes a lot of sense actually yes yes that's correct <laughs> so thinking more about what is agile marketing um i'm a great grabber of quotations from other writers and I think that, you know they all help us to focus on the things that we need to be doing here. This Haslam and Chinoy quote that you can see on this slide to me just sums up agile marketing. Think big, you have to have an eye to the future but start small, don't overwhelm yourself and try to do too much mm -hmm. from the very beginning expand only what's proven because we need to look at the evidence of what we're doing mm -hmm. is it right is it giving the value okay then this seth godin quote i love perhaps even more <laughs> um you know it's five words that in itself is agile precise specific make useful promises keep them you know, this is the sort of um, clear language that I think we as marketers should be using mm. in all our communications. Mm. Absolutely. This points towards the, the value, useful. It points towards the productivity. You have to be able to keep your promises. You have to deliver. Mm -hmm. And it points towards the customer being at the core, this customer centricity mm -hmm. that we target all the time in as much as it uses the word promises. It's, it's about relationships. Okay. I mean, I can definitely see how that can apply to, to agile marketing, but that quote wasn't necessarily for agile marketing, was it, by Seth Godin? No, absolutely no. not. But I, I can I see just, how that can relate strongly. I just saw it and thought, actually, no. I think, you know, to be fair, the Haslam and Chinoy one isn't about agile marketing sure. either. No, but enough. when I saw that, I it thought... It related strongly okay, to Okay, this, this is really good because... Yeah. You know, you start with testing a piece of content in a small way, mm -hmm. see how the audience reacts to it, mm -hmm. and then you build it. You don't start on a, a big piece of content and wait until it's perfect sure. until you release it to the world. No, absolutely. Because all the while, things are moving on. Exactly. And you're, you're losing that opportunity mm -hmm. to get feedback from your community. So... The material's not working for you while you're sitting on it. No, fair it, it needs to be out there. Okay. So ultimately, I think it's about getting the right things done. And, and that, that is the key thing. It's finding the right things. And I think Agile Techniques offer us the opportunity to hone in on the things that really matter. Mm -hmm. You know, we might call those our must-haves or we might call that our minimum viable product. Right. But it's the ability to avoid protracted processes and hone in on just that thing, to keep that focus on what the business needs right now and not waste time and resources planning for a year's time. Of course. Because things change. Okay. Okay. And then obviously you've got your quote there as well, Pam. Yes, I... I um, <laughs> 
I think that that really is, is about getting the right things done. <laughs> well, you know, I looked at that and I thought, hmm, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I, I do think of putting it there with no, nothing on the bottom. Sure. But then I thought, well, you know, that's not fair. No, own it. They Absolutely. Need, they no, need to good. know. That's good. I mean, you've really studied this topic, so it makes a lot of sense to me. It really does. Okay, so then moving on, um, we've got one of your favourite quotes here as well, haven't we, from one of your favourite authors? Uh, yes, absolutely. Andrea Freire wrote this um, very valuable book, Death of a Marketer. Now, don't panic everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That doesn't mean that we were all out of a job. Um, it means that we have to accept that the past is the past and we now have to do things in a new way. And this particular quote from the book that I pulled out, um, I grabbed because people get very hung up on methodology. They panic. They worry. Mm, mm. Oh, my goodness. I have to use Scrum. I don't quite know how that works. Sure. Or how exactly is Kanban working? Okay. Or what is Scrum Ban? Should I be doing that? Fair enough. But ultimately, it, the methodology is a means to an end. Mm -hmm. As Andrea says here, it, it's what we to do, what we need to do to support our larger goal of being agile. Okay. Well, that makes a lot of sense. And then... This is also supported in Steve Denning's book, which I would recommend to everybody, The Age of Agile, mm -hmm. if they've not already read it. And that was the one that came out this year, wasn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, and Steve also validates this view that in the end, agile is a mindset. You know, the, the, the tools, the processes and practices matter, um, but it's the mindset mm. that really makes those work. Mm. I think it's to do with what is an agile mindset? It's to do with accepting that we don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. It's this, you know, crystal ball itis thing where people come in, they expect you to know, well, you're a professional, you're a marketer. Why don't you know the answers? Well, I'm sorry, but the world is moving. Exactly. So yeah. what we have to do is test. Mm -hmm. We need to, um, be able to come in with an idea, test it on our audience and find out if it works. We have to be comfortable not knowing mm -hmm. and then have a safe environment to experiment collaboratively, you know, co-creation with stakeholders and, and customers. Okay. So, Bina, you would agree with that, wouldn't you? The fact that obviously agile is a mindset and so agile marketing is, is by definition a mindset as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there were some really good uh, quotes, Pam, that you have highlighted and some really good points that you have, um, you know, have have um, outlined there and definitely agree with all of them. Um, to me, you know, agile marketing is is more than anything a mindset which helps us marketers refocus our attention. You know, every time we see these shiny new things we could be trying out, <laughs> um, this mindset helps us refocus towards thinking and working in a different way. Mm. Um, in a smarter in a more competitive way mm -hmm. that you know ultimately so puts our customers at the center of what we do and you know as, as you have pointed out it's that the world around around us keeps changing in um, in every domain in every industry and marketing is no you know it's it's not an exception to that mm -hmm. so we have to we have to keep pace with change we have to be ahead of the change we have to be flexible we have to welcome change and Pam, I think that you pointed that out really well. We um, we have to be open to experimenting, trying out new things, and not being afraid of failing fast. You know this concept of fail fast, mm. do something, test it, get some feedback, and then see how it's how it how it's been. If it's failed, then it's fine. It's not a problem. You just learn and move on, and you try another thing. It's that learning that thing, isn't it, Sabina? Do, you, do I think that for an agile organization and anybody using it, agile techniques, it's about having a, what Carol Dweck calls a growth mindset. It's that thing about always looking to improve. Do you remember when we were at school and we used to get reports, maybe, of course I never got one like this, <laughs> that used to say, I must do better. could do better, yeah. you know. Yeah. And that was, it's really interesting, that was regarded as a negative thing. Mm. But, you know, mm. it isn't a negative thing. Now we need to live by that could do better mentality because, let's face it, everything we do, 
we could do better. And what Agile is doing is drawing us in to say, okay, well, we've done that. It worked well in this regard, Mm -hmm. but maybe we could do better. What do we need to do the next time so that we're iterating and improving? It's it's about sort of evaluating one chunk of work and then improving it. So I would say that marketing expertise is about having the experience and the framework within which to, to experiment in a useful way that adds value. Okay. No, that's fair enough. Thank you, ladies. That that make, all makes a lot of sense. Um, I mean, if we move on, we've we've got the slide now that's obviously, you know, showing how customer centric um, marketing needs to be and organisations need to be now. But what would you like to say on this? Well, I think this is really interesting because this this little cartoon here comes from a book that was published in 1987. So let's not kid ourselves. Putting the customer Mm. at the heart of marketing is not new. No, exactly. It should always be the way. Um, But look what he's doing. He's dumping it on it. (laughs) You know, what we're saying is that that we're putting the customer at the centre in a different way. Because in those days, we lived in a company-centric world. It was about the company and we sat there as the company said, come buy our products. Mm-hmm. You know, this is who we are. Come and get them. Um, but now the customer is in control. We, this is an absolute. With, in the days of the internet, the customer can get product information anywhere. Mm. It, it's not a question of product information being delivered to consumers mm-hmm. through marketing. No, they're driving it, aren't they? The yes, consumer's it's, definitely driving it. It's a, it's a different thing. Andrea, in her book, says marketers are participants in conversations, not sources of truth. Participants in conversations, not sources of truth. And I think that is, is really important, that what we're doing now is finding out where the customer conversation is Mm -hmm. involving ourselves in it okay not so much um giving them what they want but finding out what they don't know they need okay that was about giving them what they want now we're getting into conversations with them we're building relationships to find out what they don't know they need don't forget that the original research apparently around the Sony Walkman mm-hmm. said nobody would ever want to listen to music on the go. People don't always know. No, sure. You know, the largest taxi company in the world owns no taxis. Mm. Mm. It, the, things are happening now we can't predict. Absolutely. So we just yeah. have to involve ourselves in those com- those conversations in, a, in an H2H way, if I... Can you coined that phrase, that. haven't yeah, you? I H to have. H. I have. Okay. We need to be part, ex- become part of the customer's world, not expect them to be a part of ours. Okay. okay. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And there's this lovely concept, you know, um, about unknown unknowns that I really like because it just it just pictures, you know, how customers sometimes don't even know what they want. They don't even know what they need. So, Pam, what you were just pointing out is really helpful, um, I think, for marketers to to understand. And I've heard this quote recently. I can't remember who it was from, um, unfortunately. But I remember there was someone saying, you know, we live in a world where, in marketing especially, there's noise everywhere around us as customers. Mm -hmm. And you know, the place you want to get to is become that noise that people want to hear, right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Put it in a funny way, but it is becoming relevant to people and building those relationships that you have mentioned, Pam. Yeah, I think I think we need to take, as marketers, every opportunity to get closer to the customer. Um, yes. So I don't know what your experience is with this, Sabina. It would be quite interesting. But, for instance, with, with case studies, People sometimes say to me, will you write this case study? We, as the organization, will tell you all about it and then you can write it. And I tend to push back and say, well, actually, no, I want to talk to the customer. Because so often I have found in in my experience that what the customer thinks they've bought 
Mm. is different mm. to what the organization thinks it's sold. Yes. So you need to have that conversation with the real customer. Yes. Find out the words they use to put back in your marketing materials. That makes a lot of sense. Because it's, yeah. it's about them and, and their tone, their language, and what they think they're buying, because the value may not be where you think it is. No, that's an interesting yeah. point. Okay, so can I do more faster? How does how does this apply? <laughs> I, I think I, I think I, I probably think, know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's the traditional view of agile <laughs> you, that you that actually you you get through things quicker. It's about doing more. Mm. Um, and actually, it, it is, to an extent it is, and to an extent it isn't. That's perhaps not Exactly, helpful. we've got to say there's, but there's I, governance. I'm a very things. strong believer that you can actually do more by doing less. I agree. So that more, yeah. the important thing is that more applies to value, mm -hmm. not stuff. Mm -hmm. So by doing less and really using the agile approach, to hone in on the things that give your organization the most value when it needs it, you can actually do more. But in reality, you may well be doing less. You're just doing the right things. Mm, so it's that in, in, there's a lot of um, tenets within Agile. One of my favorites is stop starting, start finishing. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and I think marketers, because they've got stuff being thrown at them from everywhere, they yep. tend to... They tend to um, become overwhelmed quite quickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. And all that time that's taking in task swapping is time lost. Isn't that where like prioritization should come into it though, in a way as well? Absolutely. Mm. But it, you can't prioritize unless you're constantly honing in on where the value is. Yeah. That's so that that's really the key. And this statistic is actually quite shocking. And wouldn't it be wonderful if we all said, oh, no, we don't recognize that. <laughs> Sabina, do you recognize this? Yeah, I mean, we um, we were guilty of doing that. Uh, but we found that, you know, actually working in an agile way helps us, again, refocus by, you know, having this backlog of, of tasks we want to do. And as Jenny, as you pointed out, prioritization, using prioritization to, to constantly look where the highest value is and focusing on those items, delivering them first, because, you know, that's where the value lies. <laughs> Let's not do everything we can, anything, um, and then risking, you know, to get to burnout, mm -hmm. um, which isn't going to help anyone, really, mm -hmm. as marketers or the business or the customers, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, there, there are some very simple things that we can do to combat this problem. Um, I have a thing with meetings where... If you put the, the make a like a, a collaborative online board, it could be Trello, it could be Jira, Asana, any of those, you have a board for the meeting mm. and people actually put up before the meeting mm -hmm. what they would need to achieve from that meeting. And then there's a place where they can put up issues that they want resolved. Okay, sure. And maybe other collaborators can resolve those before the meeting. So they mm. all type that in, get it done. And then what you're left with is a much shorter agenda. And those are the things that really need discussion. Mm -hmm. So you get rid of, you hone in on what you need out of it, what are the outcomes, and then you get rid of what you can before the meeting even starts. But if you, to be honest, if you're using those collaboration boards mm -hmm. and doing all the sort of visualization as Sabina says, mm -hmm. Um, the need for reporting, meetings, constant emails could be diminished. Is it? diminished because, mm. you know, emails are the worst. Mm. Oh, gosh, if yes. you have it on a collaboration yes. board, mm. you get the discussion around the challenge that needs to be resolved. It's almost, yeah, absolutely. When we've come back to that trust and transparency angle as well, haven't we? Because everyone, if everyone's standing up and doing the techniques, as it were, everything's out in the open and those meetings can be a lot more focused on what needs to be resolved and the expectations would be clear wouldn't yes. they? yes yes yeah. absolutely jenny sabina would you like to add anything there at all on that one 
Uh, well, I absolutely agree with uh, what, what you both said, you know, and we found this so many times working for us where we go into a meeting, we don't just, you know, go with a blank sheet. And no matter if you use an online collaboration tool like Trello um, or if you use good old post-its that we all love in the Agile absolutely. world. Good old post-its, <laughs> yeah. No, you're right there. Yeah. And just, you know, just scope out what you want to achieve from the meeting and even prioritize the things you want to achieve in that meeting. So mm -hmm. you focus on the most important ones first. Um, you know, make sure you have time to go through them, discuss them and to reach some actions or some some items to leave the meeting with. That really helps in, in you know, not wasting time doing meetings and, and pointless calls and and then going, oh, you know, I have to go reporting because we haven't actually achieved anything in the meeting. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that, that's good work in practices, isn't it, really? Yeah. Definitely. OK, so now we're looking at um, sales, sales and marketing. Uh, yes, it's, I think that sales and marketing can is a huge generalization, Jenny. OK, this is your but thoughts. In general, mm -hmm. I think sales and marketing can support each other more than they do. And I think marketing particularly needs to be super close mm. to the sales department because let's face it, mostly they're the ones that are closest to the customer. And they're face to face, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I'm sorry to say that in many, many instances over um, my marketing career, mm -hmm. um, I've been in many rooms and heard things like, a salesman or a business development person talking to a prospect and saying, oh, yes, well, it says that on the website or it says that in the brochure, but don't worry about it, Mr. <laughs> Customer. That's just something the marketing department produced. Wow. OK. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it I'm is, a bit shocked by that too, Sabina. <laughs> it's very common. Right. It's, it, we, you know, we have to be real because... The business development department mm. or the salespeople that go out and talk to customers, mm. they may not use their own website. I can see how those you silos know? can appear and, they, yeah, in an organization. So definitely. you absolutely have to, to take, your, take your lead from the salespeople mm. because the, the marketing materials should reflect the story mm. that the salespeople are delivering. Of course. It needs to be in one language. Yes. And yeah. to be honest, that is one bit of collaboration that can be improved in most organisations. And you see agile marketing paving the way for that and bringing those two together a lot closer. So the wishes of the, the customer, I guess, are more in focus. Absolutely. And I think agile generally encourages collaboration across functions. Okay. And so what I've done here is I've just picked two functions that very obviously should be collaborating. Mm, absolutely. And I, I know that very often there is more that can be done here to bring them closer together. You collaborate there, don't you, Sabina? You must do it in your agile organisation. We do. I mean, we do our best, you know. Obviously, we're not experts by, by any means, but, um, you know, sales and marketing collaboration and, and alignment for what it's mm. worth is I think one of our favorite topics in the marketing world mm. and us marketers always like to say you know oh no sales are not collaborating with us um no we could there's definitely always I think room for improvement mm. but um you know uh, working in an agile way I think is is something that really helps with the sales and marketing alignment too because of all the good things that agile brings to the table you know collaboration visibility trust um seeing what the other team does, building, you know, collaborating on a to-do list and then prioritizing what's the most value for mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. Because it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what the sales team wants. It doesn't matter what the marketing team wants. It matters what the customer wants. Absolutely. And, and I believe, yeah. you yeah. know, the Agile way can, can help us, an Agile way of working can help us get there. Yeah, very much. I mean, once again, this this uh, sounds to me very much like common sense, and and it should be as it is. But sense is not yeah, common, Jenny. But there is that absolutely. Yeah. No, there <laughs> and is. To be that. honest, I think you've told me that before. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, agile and sense go yeah. together, but we know that sense is not common. They do. So that's another good working practice to bring everybody together, multidisciplinary teams. That's part of it as well. But obviously, the value and the customer, um, they need to be held in huge and high regard. And everybody needs to collaborate. 
I mean, it's yeah, it makes a lot of sense. OK, so look at agile briefing then, Pam. Yes, I think, that, you know, I think we have to take our agility across every level. Mm. And we know that in agile, we keep documentation to a minimum. Mm -hmm. And anybody that works with me knows that when I'm doing marketing projects, they get really minimum documents. I talk about my one side of A4 <laughs> because, you know, if it doesn't fit on one side of A4, it's too much. Tiny writing. <laughs> <laughs> Nine or something on your font. <laughs> but you know, there is there is some very <laughs> there's some very easy ways to to keep it simple. Sure. Um and Agile's all about keeping it simple. It is. And Absolutely. user stories is a brilliant one. You know, you you start with a user story and that means that you're really honing in on the outcome you want to achieve mm -hmm. and you know who the audience is and what they're going to, to get from it. So, you know, as a something, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. I can do something else. And as soon as you apply that really simple formula, mm -hmm. um, then you've got it. The other thing I do with briefing is to do outline briefs first. Okay. And then for something like a sort of larger project, like a website or whatever, mm -hmm. I do an outline brief. And then the next level is produced in close collaboration with the supplier. Of course. So mm -hmm. you use your outline brief to procure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that next level you do together because then you've got complete buy in. You've got complete understanding as you go through. Mm -hmm. You can agree your schedules and confirm when things can be done by you're you're working much more collaboratively so it's it's co-created mm, in a true. sense mm. and that way you get multiple perspectives on the brief mm -hmm. and and again agile's all about remembering there are multiple perspectives that so we don't know the answer so if you get multiple perspectives you guard against being locked into your own thinking mm -hmm and automatically falling into doing what you did last time without re-evaluating the current climate. No, fair, fair point. Absolutely. Um, Sabina, would you like to add anything there? It, 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 all sounds, it all sounds good to me. Working practices like that, that sounds um, very, very strong. Definitely, that's something we, you know, I, I definitely endorse, Pam, what you just explained. Um, and I love the idea of an outline brief. You know, that's just, that this is what we do as well, and it works really well. You um, you create the outline brief, you know, call it an epic if you want, call it your high-level initiative. Oh, it's just one then, page, it's not an epic. <laughs> <laughs> it can't be called an epic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really interested to hear you bring in these buzzwords, yeah. Sabina. The what's, what's your definition of an epic? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, an epic for us is a kind of a larger um, initiative we want to do that then gets broken down into sure. features and then yeah. tasks. So, you know, um, I mean, you can see the brief maybe supporting the epic. The epic is, you know, what is it that I want to do? Um, and then the brief, you just, you know, describe on a very high level what you're trying to achieve, uh, what you would like to achieve. Uh, but I love the idea of having the outline brief and then getting together with the people that were actually going to be involved mm -hmm. in in doing the work, and then you know collaboratively you you segment what needs to be doing into smaller bite bite sized chunks so that you can actually you know start working on them and start delivering value and keeping things moving, and you know not just spending ages on writing pages and pages of documentation without actually getting to do anything. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's let's talk about some of those techniques that you use and the applications that you use then, um, Sabina, because you actually have agile practices that you work on a, what, a daily basis um, or more possibly, don't you, um, in, in RADTAC. So can you can you kind of talk us through some of these? We've touched on some of these already. Obviously, we've mentioned user stories and we've mentioned Moscow or the prioritization. So and this is actually one of your um one of your boards isn't it it is yes that's our, our marketing board in the office um and it's actually got posted you know written by different members of the team which would mean that we'll have different handwriting some of it nicer some of it you know not so nice <laughs> um 
but this helps us very much, you know, it acts like a visual radiator, if you want to use a fancy terminology. Um, it creates that vis visibility, that visualization that we've uh, we've touched on so much earlier. Um, we're very much of, you know, the, um, the mentality that you have to find a way to work that works for you. You know, there's no point in, in you know, saying I'm going to use Scrum and then just be really, really strict about using Scrum if that is not the right way for you. Um, same with Kanban, you know, we might be using elements of different methodologies and just getting to a point where you kind of pick what works for your own scenario, for your own situation so that you get the most value out of it. And that's sort of what we do. So we use, um, you know, we work in sprints. We've got a scrum team, which is actually built from um, from cross-functional teams, uh, members from cross-functional teams. Okay. Um, and we work in sprints. It's really helping by creating, you know, visibility across the entire business and really, really helping with the collaboration part, um, especially because um, we're not located all in the same office. So, you know, the sprint review and the sprint planning, for example, are um, a really good opportunity for us to get together and collaborate to talk about what it is that we are doing, find things we you know that require collaboration from from members from different teams, and together just doing the best we can to move things forward, forward getting value out of things, and well, ultimately getting value to our customers. Um, now the Canva board we're using, you know, has been customized to work for our sort of own situation mm -hmm. so we've got the, the traditional to do doing done um, and then we've inserted a few columns like expedite for example because the, the reality is that us marketers have requests coming in all the time especially mm -hmm. from you know, internal stakeholders in the business and we uh, obviously we have a backlog of, of items we need to do and they have been prioritized in terms of the value they bring to the business and then ultimately to the customer. Um, so when new requests come in, it's really good to have this expedite column because we evaluate those requests in terms of, you know, what are the other, what are the other priorities and these new requests that are coming in, are they of higher priority for the business? For okay. what ways we need to get to the customer? And if they are, they get put in the expedite column um, being mindful, you know, that just means that the other stuff gets pushed down. Mm -hmm. We can only do so much at a time. Now, another column we've got in doing, and I'm not sure how much you can see in the picture, but we've got the actual work in progress in doing, and then we've got a little side column called waiting. Um, because again, for us in marketing, it, you know, we produce something and the reality is we sometimes need input from stakeholders. You know, we work things, Let's say you work on a case study, right? You bring it up to a certain level, but then you want you want to check it, you know, with your delivery team. You want to check it with your sales team. So you do you advance things as much as you can, and then at some point they just they just get somewhere where you need more feedback or more input. Um, and then we've just got the sign of column, which just means you know this is done, everything's done on it. We just need to make sure the stakeholders are happy with it, and then we're ready to push it out essentially. Okay. Um, oh yes, and we also have got color coding. That's mm -hmm. why we have got random colors of post-its on the board. <laughs> um, <laughs> we don't just like to keep it colorful, which we do, but we, uh, we've also color coded in terms of what type of marketing activities they are. You know, for example, green we use for content, um, yellow we use for email marketing, okay. uh, purple is for sort of more BAU stuff, you know, business mm -hmm. as usual, mm -hmm. uh, blue is for marketing materials. And that just helps, you know, instantly when us as a team, but anyone else really walk into the office looks at the board they can see instantly what is going on sure just just like when oh sorry go on sorry when you when you see that done column you know full it kind of just fills your heart up with, with a nice warm fuzzy feeling right because you got so much stuff done <laughs> so it's a nice pat on back as well for the team so then what do you do with the done column you, you take them down and, and start again or do you yes, yes. so we or? We usually um, take them down on a weekly basis, you know, every week at the end of the week or the start, early start of the next week, we take the done items out. Um, and what we started doing is we started recording how much we get done in a week so that we have, you know, we, we can get better at forecasting what the capacity of the marketing team is. Okay. 
Okay. And and also just out of interest, do you keep this on a, on a digital kind of board as well, out of interest? We do, yes. So we use Trello and we, we mirror what we do on this physical board in the office. We mirror it on Trello because, you know, the whole point of being visible is also making it accessible to others. Mm -hmm. So the, the physical board is great for us in the office, but Trello just well, Trello is what we use at the moment. Um, but no matter what you use in a digital way, it helps other people in the business see what it is that you are doing. It helps stakeholders be able to, you know, to provide their input in areas where it's relevant. It helps people collaborate with you on, on you know, tasks that might involve other departments. Mm. And it, it gives that nice reassurance at the business that at any given time, they can go into the Trello board and they can look, you know, where is the marketing team at with my template, for example. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's great to see. So, no, I really appreciate you actually sharing that with us and, and talking through these techniques as well. Um, I mean, obviously, Moscow is there and, and uh, that's that's an agile PM technique as well, isn't it, Pam? Yes, indeed, it is. I, th I think Moscow for marketers is brilliant. I really do. I use it a lot. Um, I think particularly when you're starting a project and everybody wants everything, mm. obviously. Mm. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Preferably today. You have those customers too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a very good way of, of breaking things down and, and getting a new perspective on everything. So if you're doing a website, mm. you can literally take, once you've got a complete specification, you can take it. And, and put it into the, the must have, do it on Trello or whatever. Mm. Uh, must have column, should have column, a could have column, and it won't have this time. Because naturally with a website, you're probably heading to, um, a sort of phase two of the development. Mm -hmm. And then that really makes people focus on what they really, really need now. Where's the real value now for the business mm -hmm. and what can be left? So it just gives you a little bit of, um, sort of uh granularity okay on the urgency okay so it's a very useful tool okay well no thank you thank you for sharing that with us um sabina as well and going through those points it's uh it, like i said it's it's really good to see and that and that transparency is very clear there because obviously you have the stand-ups as well don't you and you actually have everyone standing around and 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 talking how, how long are your stand-ups out of interest because i know textbooks they're supposed to be what about 10 minutes yeah, so we, um, you know, it depends how many <laughs> marketing members we've got in on the day. Sure. We try to keep them as um, as quick as possible. Um, the way we run it is, you know, and that's something I think you can tweak based on, you know, every team's preference um, and what, again, what works for everyone. Mm. We usually start with the latest done items, you know, just to give a quick review of what we have achieved. Okay. Um, and then we kind of work our way backwards. So we start with done, you know, what's been done, great job, okay, let's move on. What's in sign off? What's in sign off usually needs to be reviewed with other people. Mm -hmm. So we try you know, to, to do that as fast as we can so, we, so that then those things can then move over to done. Then we, we have a look at waiting, you know, what's in waiting? What can we do to get things out of waiting, moving towards sign off or done? Mm -hmm. um, and then we get to, you know, what's work in progress and then, you know, ultimately going to what to do and then again because of the new requests coming in we um tend to have a look at the backlog you know every day make sure the tasks are in a in a well prioritized way providing the most value first to the business to the customers and then just you know doing any reprioritizing as it sure. needs be sure okay well i mean the last slide we actually popped in this was actually agile pm wasn't it absolutely yeah. Thanks for including that, Jenny. I think that... And can I just say, just before we go on to Agile PM, just to kind of discuss that, if, if there are any questions out there, please feel free to uh, send them through, um, because after this slide, we're going to go through to questions, and I'm just a bit mindful of the time. So, uh, yeah, we've got a few minutes for questions. So if you can send some through, if you're curious, if we've... Uh, um, if you've got any questions relating to any of the topics, really, that we've, we've covered this morning um, across the subject of um, agile marketing, because I think it's very clear that it's a, a huge, powerful um, method, um, mindset to actually um, make happen in organizations. It, it just makes sense, like a lot of agile does, like we've discussed. Um, so, yeah, please send them through to me. Please um, type them in and I will try to get through as many as I can. So, Pam, over to you. Let, let's look at Agile PM, because obviously these principles 
can apply, can't they? These are the exact Agile PM principles. The only one I have messed with, so I apologise. <laughs> what? Messed? <laughs> is communicate continuously, clearly, and I've added, and transparently, because okay. that obviously is really important. But Agile PM is what really brought me to the world of Agile for marketing. And it uh, is just perfect in every way. We've covered a lot of this, but, you know, the value, mm -hmm. identifying and prioritizing what the business needs most mm -hmm. now, that's mm -hmm. how we get through our workload and avoid that overwhelm, um, setting the right level of content to make sure it can be delivered on time without missing opportunities. Mm -hmm. So finding out where the real value is, cutting things back, doing less to actually get the full opportunity optimised, collaborating closely with those really next to the customer, Okay. Um, as Sabina pointed out earlier, quality affects your brand. So that must be protected at all times. Mm -hmm. So because you're working in an agile way, that does not give you license to overlook quality ever, never compromise quality. Um, and, and building from firm foundations. So always starting with that discovery process to understand the outcome that you're targeting. And fully understanding that outcome means looking at it from different perspectives. Okay. And that iteration, you know, getting feedback, doing a little bit, improving it, could do better at being at the heart of the way we work. Okay. Um, and getting the visibility, and as a visibility as a part of communication. So constantly looking at the analytics, finding out the evidence of what we've achieved, visualising that and making it public to those that need to know. Okay. All right. No, well, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so they can very much apply, can't they, to uh, Agile marketing. So I, I think we've discussed this and, and we've really explored this topic in some great depth. And I, I think it's very clear that Agile marketing is, is here to stay. And I think it can only get stronger. Um, as people find their, their way through with the Agile principles to relate and uh, connect to their marketing. Sabina, what, what would you say? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a growing, obviously a growing trend that, that we see um, with, as I mentioned earlier, Agile expanding beyond IT, beyond software. And, you know, there's a reason to that because people try out a few things. They see, hold on, it actually brings some value. It helps me achieve more things. It, it helps me work better, you know, smarter in a more competitive way. Mm -hmm. So if it helps me, you know, why shouldn't I do it? <laughs> okay, well, absolutely. And that, yeah, I'm not going to say it again. It makes sense because uh, I know Pamela's going to be saying, yes, <laughs> sense isn't, what's your, what's your line on that? Sense isn't. It's okay. You're, you're in the clear, Jane, yeah. because you didn't actually say common sense. Yeah. And it oh, does make enough. sense. It does make sense. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right, let's um, let's take some questions now. Um, we've had a question from um, Clive. So thank you for your question, Clive. We really appreciate you engaging with us uh, with the webinar. Um, we've got here, in my experience, agile marketing can sometimes be seen as a tactic responding to the environment on the hoof rather than a strategy. Is there a disconnect in some people's minds between agile marketing and strategy for their business? If so, how can we link between agile marketing and, and business strategy and how can that be made stronger? That is such an excellent question. It's a great question. Thanks, Clive, for that. This Let's is see if we can answer it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, this is what's thrown at uh, ag agility, really. You yeah. know, it's sort of, okay, it just means sort of doing this, doing things on the hoof and making decisions. But this is where you get back to those firm foundations. If you actually set your goals and have a clear idea of your outcomes – and know what you're targeting, mm -hmm. and you set that up at the start, at just at high level, you know, the, the way it's achieved and the detail can be filled in later. So if, for instance, we're doing, um, say you're doing an email marketing campaign, mm. there's no excuse for not knowing what you need to achieve from that, mm -hmm. and you might end up with 10 weeks of subject lines, yeah. but no emails. Right. But, you know, you, you, that's a, an example of 
how you you know your your strategy, you know how that email marketing campaign fits with the overall strategy. Mm-hmm. You've got all your building blocks in place. It's only the detail that you're leaving until later. I hope that explains it. Sabina, would you like to add to that at all? I mean, that that was a really good um, answer in my opinion. I would say, you know, let's not view agile marketing as an excuse to sort of, you know, making everything up as we go mm. <laughs> and you know, mm. being spontaneous and saying, oh, I'm just going to do something. I'm going to experiment all the time. Um, we do need to have a strategy, you know, and even, yeah. you know, agile guidances. There has to be some planning. You know, you can't just dive in blindly into what you are doing. You have to know your goals. You have to know what you want to achieve. And you do a high level plan. But the whole beauty, of, I think, of agile marketing is you leave room for improvement. You leave room for change. You leave room for experimenting, especially things change so quickly, you know, around us in, in every sort of business area and industry that we have to not just be open to change but welcome change sure sure yeah absolutely um we've had another question through and and i think we can agree with this um it's important to understand the difference between strategy and tactics before implementing agile absolutely um i think they they it, it's a good question because people do often get these muddled up i think it's a statement actually <laughs> yeah it is a statement yeah. well it is okay it's a statement but it is important because um, tactics are what deliver strategy. Yes. Those are the things that you do. Mm. And, and the strategy is the, the direction your, the whole organization is going mm. uh, and what you want to achieve at the end. That, you know, your strategy is how you will get there and the tactics are the specific things that you do. Okay, and um, Sabina, one last question that's, that's coming through to you, I think, actually. Um, mm-hmm. Do you have practical experience of implementing Agile marketing strategy as opposed to the process part of Agile? So I guess you have an actual marketing strategy to work with Agile marketing. Well, yeah, so we, we do have an Agile marketing strategy. Um, well, we have a marketing strategy. Sorry, let me rephrase. And, you know, coming back to the whole point of Agile being a mindset, we you know our marketing strategy might be a traditional one Mm -hmm. what we do is we take an agile approach to it you know we we get put things to an mvp stage minimum viable product so we're able to get something out there get feedback and then iterate improve you know um do better um so it's not so much about labeling it as i think as an agile marketing strategy it is a marketing strategy we take an agile approach to it um and, you know, through the tactical things we are doing, it sort of becomes more agile and supports the mindset, if that makes sense. OK, yep. Yeah, no, it, it does make sense. There's a few more questions coming through. And, and please, that, that's absolutely fine. We, we'd love to receive your questions and I will put them to um, my panels probably off air now because um, we've obviously come to the end of our hour of the webinar. And I just want to thank you, everybody, for uh, for tuning in and listening. You will get a recording of uh, the webinar. We will get that sent out to you. Um, and possibly if my guests are happy, um, we'll try and answer some more of these questions that are coming through in that follow up email that we'll send out as well. That would be really helpful. That would be fantastic, Jenny. More than happy to do that. OK. Um, and there's some ones coming through about the, the, the technicalities of, of delivering um, the implementa- sorry, implementations as well, Sabina. So um, I'll, I can put those in your direction as well. So if, if you can engage with us, that would be fantastic as well. Yeah, of course, I'm happy to um, okay. share you know, anything I can share. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I think we'll have to draw it to a close. It's been an absolute delight talking to you two this morning. Thank you so much for your time, Pam and Sabina. I, we really do appreciate it. I mean, we did start off as exploring um, agile marketing, and I, and I think we've done a fantastic job. So um, looking at the mindset, obviously, and looking at those practical in, um, implementations, uh, to delivery and to give that value to the customer. I think that's what it's all about. And I think we've learned a lot today of, of how we see it and how we perceive it um, from everything we've read and everything we've studied and everything you've put into practice as well. So really, I really appreciate your trust and your transparency in joining us this morning. Well, so thank you so much for the invitation. It's been really good. And I hope, you know, everyone that have, has joined us today has sort of, you know, found it as useful as as I have personally found it 
really useful and engaging to explore agile marketing together. And I'm looking forward to perhaps talking about it in the future and exploring it even more. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's a subject that deserves our attention. It is. Yeah, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you, Jenny. Look, no problem at all. I think that there's going to be more attention on agile marketing, definitely from the consortium. So again, thank you, ladies, for joining me this morning. And thank you to everybody for joining us on the webinar. Uh, let's keep the discussions flowing, as I said. So send them through to Jenny at um, agilebusiness.org. Let me just get this back to the next slide, because it really is that time now to say Thank you very much. Um, send your further questions and feedback to Jenny at agilebusiness.org. But from all of us now this morning, goodbye for now. And thank you for taking the time to engage with us today. Thank you. Bye bye.